Today on the show, we learn what it takes to run a premier app agency. How's it going, everybody? Jason Croft here. Today on the show, we've got Kirk Ballou. Now, this episode is a little different. We change up things from the Bizmobile into Kirk's Tesla. And it's also different because I'm not driving. I don't I'm not so not so comfortable with this. Um, but even less comfortable because even Kirk wasn't driving uh, most of the time, as you'll see in there. A little, little auto mode feature going on with Tesla it was my first experience with the self-driving vehicle there, but it was actually fantastic. So Kirk, Kirk dives into um, everything he's gone through to build his app agency. I mean, he's worked with huge brands, and he builds apps at sort of the really, you know, the, the, the big level. But coming up over the years, he's also worked with so many startups and so many people, you know, wanting to develop an app or, or wanting to take... Um, a certain piece of their business and you know productize that in an app and he shares a lot of those lessons that he imparts with those startups that now come to him um, wanting to do stuff because he doesn't just work with anybody he makes sure that the the end goal is something that that both Kirk's company touch Titans and the person coming to him are, are gonna win they're gonna be a good fit and he really breaks down a lot of those criteria in this episode. So it's it's uh, it's an awesome thing. I think you'll get a lot out of it. So let's jump in with Kirk Ballou. How's it going, everybody? A little different show today with the great Kirk Ballou. Howdy. I'm, he's he's in the driver's seat. I don't know what's going on. I don't like this. I feel very out of control. I am going to just like do this the whole time and just make you very uncomfortable. I you think. know, I'm not just, driving right. That's the other part. E- so, Elon's driving, right? <laughs> exactly. So we're in Kirk's yeah. fantastic Tesla. Yeah. And um, very comfortable. And the other part is that really neither one of us is driving the Bizmobile today. So um, let's get this thing rolling. Cool. Let's head out. Let's do it. So we are at WeWork um, in Plano, which is a fantastic spot. And... Um, I wanted to have Kirk on the show. This is very, I feel, I feel very luxurious just kicking back here like this, not having to, having to drive and chat. Um, so I wanted to have Kirk on the show. He owns an, I would say an app company. That's app development company. That's a very, I think too small of a description, <laughs> I, I think, for it, um, called Touch Titans. And give me a little, little background on that. What, first of all, just what your company is about currently. Sure, so we are an 11 year old interactive agency based here in Dallas. Uh, yep. We work with several Fortune 500s, Fortune 100 companies, building basically idea to app store. Um, so we, we started off on the mobile side, just building apps for mobile. And uh, over the past two years, we've also gotten into uh, web apps and uh, a lot of IoT and connected car applications. And uh, lately, uh, crypto. <laughs> <laughs> yes, very nice. Yeah. And I think, um, and, and just for you you folks watching, uh, I think we're going to do a complete episode just on crypto and, and, and Kirk's involvement in that as well. Because um, it's, it's so fascinating and Kirk is very deep into it. Uh, but today's episode, we're going to definitely focus on on business development and what you're, you're seeing with the clients that you're working with. And and a little bit of, of what got you into this world and, and that evolution to where you are now working with these large large companies. Sure, well, it's not something where I had this master plan of like, you know, I'm gonna go to Dallas and create this app agency. <laughs> I was a, uh, uh, I was an architect for um, Nokia, Motorola, uh, a senior developer for Verizon before that. And it kind of led into this where you know, I, I started 2005, started Flash Widgets, and that was just, it was meant to be a side company, put out some, you know, components that were used for websites, and it turned into a business when we started getting requests for creating custom versions of what we were putting out. And um, yeah, I used the, the Dream Team network of people, great engineers, designers I'd met over the years, and uh, 
Yeah, I mean, we just, uh, we won a, uh, in, in 2008 when it really kicked off, and we won uh, the Open Screen Fund, which Adobe put together. And yeah. delivering on that, uh, it was a Twitter application that became really popular on the Nokia devices. So oh, wow. <laughs> this was, yeah, 2008 when Nokia was still a giant. And um, yeah, so we got traction there. Nokia seeing that we delivered on, uh, on that fund, you know, did what we said we were gonna do. Mm -hmm. uh, that's how we got in the door with Red Bull and Nat Geo and CNN. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. That's awesome. So, so what sort of, so it was just really by client after client, it's like, okay, I've, I've sort of built something here. We're right. Sort of, we're, we're doing something. Yeah. And then where, in your mind, where did that shift to, okay, this is, this is really a company and I need to treat it like that. Well, you know, was, in the early days, it was such a, like, it was a very organic thing where, you know, Nokia at the very beginning was just funneling a lot of that work our way. Mm -hmm. And for the first two years, it was that way where, um, you know, we did, we do like 30 apps a year and most of that was from Nokia. And most companies, like whenever Nokia, um, I would say kind of transitioned and started working with, with Microsoft, we also transitioned and started building more Windows Phone apps and then more iPhone and Android apps. So we kind of had to adapt to the market. Okay. And I, I don't know, I guess it became a business when we realized, you know, the brands were trusting us with basically coming to us with an idea and creating something they put in front of their customers, which was, it was kind of what I was doing with uh, Motorola and, and Adobe beforehand. Sure. Right. But but was there was there a point, I guess, mentally in how you approached everything or even set things up differently and, and kind of made a shift to, to go from just like, hey, we've got a bunch of projects we're doing right to okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna treat this and grow this like like a company. Yeah, I mean I, I've always I had the uh, I was like I never went more than ten guys and then we got to fifteen guys. I was like, <laughs> okay, well, I, I never, I never want more than 15 guys because it's easy to manage. And, you know, I'm, I'm very much, I guess, a, a, a hands-on, uh, chief architect where I, I like to have my hands on each project. And that's something where, you know, you don't want to scale that to 50 people, you know, it's sure. And I, I, I've got actually friends that run similar businesses in, uh, like one that runs one in Austin. And he just let me know all the scaling issues that come at 30 people or whatever. Mm -hmm. And right now we have a real control over like what we take in. And I don't know. I like that. I like being able to like each, pro it's almost like each project is a passion project. If I take on a client app, it's gotcha. cause I'm excited about it. My team's excited about it. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's good. Cause, cause you, it seems like you really are at that point of itself. It's a big leap, right? Yeah. It's, it's not just like, hey, let's bring on five guys and let's bring, like it's a bit, you're at that, not breaking point, but that next level point. Yeah. Like do you, cause you're doing really well with this, but it, it would take a, a heavy bit of investment to, to kind of go to that next level, but also not just in, you know, money and bringing people on, but maybe even how you approach your entire business model, right? Like putting systems in place to where you weren't hands on with each project and everything. Yeah, I mean, there's um, there's there's a lot of things you run into with scaling where um, you've got to make sure just at this level, you you know, for each client that we have, where you the technical managers there have the right know-how uh, for what the developers need as well as what the clients need, and uh, scaling that effectively is something that I, I haven't seen a lot of companies do very well. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that is it is a different animal. So, so you mentioned what you started off with being as the company. What would you you say is your your specialty now when you pitch your company? What is that? So we do a lot of entertainment and sports apps. Like we did uh, Red Bull TV, Red Bull Music Academy. Uh, for you know, we we worked with a lot of the uh, college conferences doing just like sports, like you know, aggregation apps for it, like. Uh, the ACC app where it did live broadcasts of the, uh, the college football games. Oh, cool. Um, yeah. 
So there's the entertainment side. There's also the connected car side. We're on the NTTA tollway right now. We built their uh, connected car app, which was a, a prototype app to show where if they don't need to build these toll plazas, we could do it all through an OBD2 device and just have geofences that would auto wow. charge you. Yeah. Um, That's great. Which, by the way, if you haven't noticed, we're still going down the highway. Kirk is not driving. Um, this is a new experience for me. We're living in the future, my friends. Yep. Right here today. So Yeah, it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> but then you also, um, so you have kind of these these one-off app, pro not one-off, but you know, these app, standalone app projects. But then you also have companies coming to you where their, their business really is that app, right? right? Or at least what they want to, correct? Yeah, so we have, um, like like Frank, the, the former GM of the Dallas Stars, he came to us with what is essentially a, um, a very focused Twitter for a specific sport. So instead of like right now you go to Twitter, you, you, you get a mix of noise of news and sports and friends posting about whatever. Uh, this is a place you go specifically for, you wanna see expert opinions on whatever the sport is, yep. um, as well as kind of a way to, uh, you know, there's a, a, a built-in gaming system where you can, you know, like Wayne Gretzky is gonna get you know, two points. I know he doesn't play more. He's going to get uh, two <laughs> points this week. He watches right? hockey. Yeah. You can see. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but that built-in gaming system also gives people reason to come back and plug in with it. So, yeah, we get a lot of really cool clients just in Dallas that are, uh, you know, building amazing things. Um, the counterpart to that is we also have a lot of startups come to us with like, hey, we have this idea. <laughs> <laughs> and... and uh, there's a certain level of uh, vetting we have to do before it's something that we'll take on, right? So yeah, yeah, go into go into some of that for me because that vetting isn't it goes way beyond. Do you have the budget for it, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it, and you look at it from a business perspective. It's like okay, a one hit revenue thing doesn't really make sense as a long term business strategy, right? So. Yeah. For for the client, it's like you know we want to make sure it's something that's not just. Um, okay, I've got 50K to spend on doing this app, I think it's a good idea. Right. It's like, uh, we look at, okay, the common components we've seen for startups that come to us that do well is, are they a subject matter expert in whatever it is they're trying to do? Um, do they have a built-in, do they have a way that they're going to market this that looks effective, right? Right. Um, and if, if we're filling in the component. Here we stop. I just realized you're, I just now saw you wearing for this shirt. I think I'm going to turn north so I don't have all the traffic to deal with it. Cool. I'm going to, I'll, I'll just, we'll pick back up. I'll restart. At that vetting question. Sorry to interrupt you there. No worries. No, 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 no. So, yeah, and that vetting process goes way beyond just, you know, do they have the money to pay for it, right? Yeah. I mean, you want to make sure it's, it's a client that makes sense as a long-term uh, partner, right? Right. They're going to be around. Their business model is sound and yeah. those kind of things. Yeah. Well, we look at the common components we've seen for startups that do well are, you know, are they sub subject matter expert in what they're working on or is it just something they thought was a good idea? Mm -hmm. um, do they have a strategy around how they're going to market it, right? Like, and, and does that look effective? But, but why, does that, why does that matter to you if, they're, if they want to pay you to go develop this app? Because we're not looking for just like, uh, you know, w one hit success. It, like to us, that's that's not true. Like we're looking for long-term partners. Like where okay. if we build an app for someone, like, like with, with Frank, for example, you know, we built the hockey version. As um, soon as he, you know, comes back to us for the soccer version, you know, it's, it's a long-term thing right. where he's benefiting, we're benefiting. And those are the kind of... Uh, the clients that we like, you know, that we're sure. trying trying to build up. Yeah, right? no, I think that makes that makes total sense because what what you're also doing, just because I, I know you, and we've had these conversations. You're you're also some of that vetting is also because you your role goes beyond hey just an app developer, right? <laughs> you know, right? Describe some of that that to me. Well, part of that too is trying to save people, like if we've seen things that work or don't work, we're trying to save them spinning their wheels, right? And, sure. Give me an example. Um, 
Well, sometimes you might have a company that they might have a good idea. They just need a few tweaks to the strategy to make it a lot more effective. Mm -hmm. And we can kind of see out of the gate if that founder is, uh, you know, if they're easy to work with or like they're open to that suggestion, it's like, sure. okay, this is someone that, that we can work with versus like, you know, you, you see the other side of that too. <laughs> right. Right. So, so describe some of that, the, how, how the other ways you, you work with, with folks. I mean, you mentioned, you know, Hey, we've seen this before. What would not, not getting into, you know, a, a company you work with, but an right. example of like, Hey, we've seen blank before. Don't go down this road. Yeah, I mean, that, that's part of the vetting, too. People come to us like, hey, have you seen this app before? And a lot of times, yes, we'll, we'll say, okay, we've seen an app doing this, but, you know, there might be something specific to the way they're wanting to do it that's unique enough to have a market, right? Yeah. Well, part of that, too, is, is finding out if, like you mentioned earlier on, are they a subject matter expert? Have they done their own research? <laughs> you right. Know? Because if they're coming to you in a, in a, in a niche and you know, already that there's four of the competitors and they have no idea then that's a big warning sign yeah I'll, so i'll give you uh two examples like hashtag roundup that we did um let's say so uh jeff is a comedian he's been on comedy central he came to us he's he's a subject matter expert in building these twitter campaigns where they would do jokes around a certain topic and he would like every week they're generating top trending on twitter Wow. And uh, this app we built for, for him helps drive that. And so he already knew that market. Plus, he had a built-in, he had like over 30,000 followers when we started the app. And so he had a built-in way to, to market it. Oh, and, that's great. Uh, yeah, he's got great traction with it. That's awesome. So where are you with, with, with Touch Titans? And I understand, you know, your your comfort level and running things now is there do you maintain or do you or do you push through whatever that whether it's even if it's not um you know necessarily bringing on a bunch of people right what's what's that that evolution look like well that's one of those things where i'm never i'm never comfortable just like sitting where we're like yeah yes i'm happy with you know as far as where the work we're doing, uh, you know, it's very satisfying. Anytime we we build something and it's successful, or we get uh, you know feedback from users that like, hey, they love the app. Mm -hmm. But I like pushing the envelope of like, like with crypto or with connected car. Like, what can we do with this? Like when we did the uh, the Tesla mind control thing, it was all about like, hey, this is possible. We could do this. There's not a real. There's no client paying us to do this. It right. was just like the tangible of like. We could do something really cool. Like, let's go ahead and do it. Right? Yeah, describe that to me, and, and, and we'll link up that that video that you have that, that you put up. But describe that to the to the audience. So we took a motive, which they're a company out of California that monitors through a EEG device, uh, brainwave. So it's not actually reading your your mind or anything. It's just uh, when you think a certain, uh, you know, you're thinking about something, it has a certain pattern to it. So it'll do like a 10 second recording and it look it looks a certain way when you're thinking like forward versus thinking pushing something backward, right? So we would use that to issue a command to the Tesla to move it forward or move it back. And it's one of those things that it was fun to do, plus it kind of when people look at, at app agencies and they say, What's the differentiator? And it's like, <laughs> well, these guys can build pretty much whatever you, you know, <laughs> right. like Whatever you need them to do with right. IoT connected car, they could probably do, right? Oh yeah, yeah. And and I and I love you know from your your marketing side though too. You didn't just go do it and now say I I can do this. Right. You made a video around it. You put that out there, and yeah. and you've done that with with other videos on your channel too, just from a fun marketing aspect. Right, like the uh, the reaction videos was just as <laughs> like taking okay. There's a bunch of really cool startups like Kubos, like Marshall, he, you know. The guy's a brain, like yeah. uh, just highlighting those guys that like we were like, okay, if there's something we could do to put more of a spotlight on them. Let's let's do it, right? Right. Yeah. So that was that was fun. I got to get to ride along on on one of those last year, uh, where Kirk in his Tesla here has the founder or company owner basically pitch their idea while he hits insane mode. We won't do that today, only because I think my camera will go flying. Right. Um, well, he hits insane mode in there, and you know people are doing this. Although I think Marshall wasn't Marshall the the, 
the coolest cucumber. Like he did Stone Cold. Oh I mean, man, he's he's ready for. Uh, yeah, he could he could handle the rocket launch or whatever. Yeah, he, <laughs> Everybody else was was uh, screaming and flipping out, but uh, well, that that was a blast. But yeah, I think that's a great differentiator. So we were going down that path of of, of those things and, and those that next level. So I don't want to take you off that that train. You know, you were describing the the, the Tesla hack and all of that but so what else is there in that evolution so um yeah i mean that's where we just we evaluate new technologies there's something cool that we could go ahead and like in our r d lab kind of build uh we'll, we'll see if it's worth taking to that next level like right now for us it's the uh our crypto wallet so we've we've got a, a wallet we looked at what else is out there and there's standard security practice not being followed by a lot of the apps that we evaluated. <laughs> uh, so that's just something where we've got a background. We, you know, we built the app for ADT. We, we, you know, so we we know security. So yeah. we we built this app that you know, if you if you're storing cryptocurrency on your phone, you want to be comfortable that it's safe, right? Oh yeah. Um, and we also took the next step of building an exchange into the app. So there's 48 different altcoins you can. Uh, convert to in this app um that's just us seeing okay there's a gap in this market no one has addressed making a, a super secure wallet that can you know you, you can manage everything that you normally do through three websites in in one app right oh that's fantastic yeah that's really smart and that just came from an interest in, in that area yeah, and seeing yeah. that that need and then right. you've got this skill set i think that's i think that's fantastic well, in our next evolution of that is we've applied an AI, um, which initially, okay, so that was born just from like, okay, March 7th, I made my first crypto investment, uh, Cody Marks Bailey, shout out. Uh, I saw his Facebook post on crypto and I finally got interested, looked at it and, uh, you know, um, looked at the technology, started reading the white papers. I'm, I'm kind of OCD if you can't tell, but uh, yeah, like. I got into that, built this AI bot that would do automatic trading for me, and it started doing really, really well. And oh, wow. So our next evolution of this uh, this wallet app is where any user can say, okay, I want to allot this much funds that is, you know, my high-risk funds that can auto-trade without you having to do anything, right? Oh, man. Yeah. So what is, I don't want to ask too many crypto questions because I, that for the other I, I do I, yeah, I, yeah. I honestly do so check check that out we'll, we'll, we'll link that up as well because um, that's got my brain going as well so but with your with your company here and even just that's an interesting aspect too what's what, what do you see as the the future of of apps is it is that evolving as we've seen sort of you know decline of you know the mass craziness you know of apps and we all use them every day but it is it become a blase thing and is it hard to sort of stand out with with an app now and, and where's the future of that going there's seven questions for you go <laughs> all right <laughs> yeah i mean so there's still a lot of demand around apps but the the case, the reason that people are coming uh to have an app built has kind of changed where um usually it ties into some business reason like um managing kind of a, uh, a service, right? Or uh, for ADT, it was so you can monitor your home security. So it's something okay. that, that adds on to- It has a functionality. Right. Too. Okay. In, in uh, like for connected car, the app, uh, you know, like if you look at Vinly, a lot of the apps were to um, help manage components of this IoT device, right? Mm -hmm. um, so they're, I, I would guess, they're more utility kind of apps and more um, service driven apps as opposed to what we had a few years ago was kind of a dot com rush of people just wanted to app, right? Right, right. And hope to sell it or make money yeah. or ads or something yeah. like that through it. Now this it's tying into a bigger business reason. Right. Gotcha. Okay. Well, that's fantastic, man. I, I, I think um, I think this is real really slick and it's an interesting evolution too, just partly as a as a business owner of, of just your own business and giving those insights, but also a business that works with so many startups and other businesses that gives you just that much more insight, right. you know, is that how you touched on it a little bit earlier, but how receptive are folks to sort of taking that, that 
I'll see advice where we're, we're consulting um, how receptive are they to it and is that something that you would like to add, to formalize and add on to your to your business that consulting component yeah so we we have kind of uh, you know I would call it CTO consulting where a lot of business owners will want just like you know expert opinion on someone who, who has like a bootstrap the company and you know, I, I, we've also seen lessons learned from several startups over the years of what worked for them and what didn't. And um, most, I would say majority are very open to a suggestion that would make their, their business or their strategy better, right? Yeah, well, that's good. You, you would hope so, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? Um, yeah, we all, I mean, we all, there's, there's folks out there who are just like, I know what I want, yeah, period, yeah. and all that. But, yeah. but I think that's, I think that's, it tends to be the minority than than the majority of, of folks. There's also the stage of the business. So we have, uh, you know, we say we handle idea to app store. So we handle essentially everything but the marketing. So we have people that come to us literally at the napkin uh, sketch yeah. phase, and then you've got uh, companies that come to us that already have wireframes and designs, and they know exactly like they just need us to execute on uh, development for you know whatever the app is right. like so the stage also kind of plays into a role and there's a lot of what we would call rescue projects where <laughs> maybe they didn't have a great experience with another uh, agency and they come to that us to, to yeah. fix it and and that's where um, we also like let's say that uh, the previous team didn't do a great job selecting a platform or whatever that's where you also consider, okay, this is a startup. They can't afford to start from scratch. What can we do to uh, get a viable product to market with where they're at? Right. Gotcha. Gotcha. That makes sense. So, yeah, wrapping up here, what's, what are some, what's some advice that, that you can give to, to some folks out there who are wanting to get into that, that app world? They want to come to you. Who's your ideal client? You know, they may be your ideal client or, 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 or not. But somebody who's got that, what's what's the first stage for them? What should they be looking for? I think one of the key things is evaluating where you're at, like understanding the, know what you're a master of and what you're not a master of. Like mm-hmm. if you're trying to wear hats that don't really belong on you, that's that's where a lot of startups get into trouble. It's like focus on your expertise and bring in experts for those other components that you need. Um, gotcha. And uh, yeah, I mean, Glad, glad to talk to you. Uh, we're, we're based here in Dallas, so if you if you want to meet and talk about your idea, I'd love to. Um, the other thing is, you know, do 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 the research on like don't just assume. Uh, the mistake a lot of startups make is they assume who their client is based on their preferences, right? Right. <laughs> it's like they, they might not even be the target market, but there's a lot a lot of people make too many assumptions up front when what really is going to tell you what your perfect app is going to be is getting it in the hands of users, right? So that can be a prototype. It could be, uh, sometimes we'll even build out a workable prototype that users can play with before you launch it. That feedback is usually like, oh, know, it's gold. I mean, it, yeah. it, it's stuff that you wouldn't think of when you're going through the ideation, right? Right, that you just can't, right? <laughs> you, yeah. you almost can't do that, right? Like, that's, that's amazing, that's, that's fantastic advice. Well, this, has been, this has been awesome, we're gonna continue to cruise down the uh, tollway here and without driving. So, love it. Thanks for being on the show, Kirk. Thanks, man. Thanks for watching, everybody. This, um, uh, I, just, I just love Kirk. He's awesome. Uh, and that was such an experience <laughs> sitting there. I don't know if you can tell on any of it. Uh, as I was sort of looked at the steering wheel quite a bit, sometimes we were on those narrow lanes there in, in construction while the Tesla was driving us around. Um, but it was awesome. It was, it was a blast. So, um, make sure you reach out to Kirk, um, find him on, you know, on social everywhere, reach out, touch Titans, um, and great guy to connect with. And in fact, we've got an upcoming episode that we broke out. He's really getting into to, to Bitcoin and, 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 and just cryptocurrency in general, actually, um, and blockchain and everything. And we did we did an entire episode just on that because there's so much to cover there. So I hope you'll check that as well. Go to djsoncroft.com forward slash podcast for all the, the show notes. And um, if you like these kind of interviews, please subscribe here on the, the YouTube channel. And we'll see you next time. It's Saturday night.
It was Saturday night and I'm feeling kind of silly When the coat on cause the air was chilly But I'ma make my way out to the record spot Gotta find some new breaks for the beats to rock I gotta come with the flavor like some lifesavers On now and later it's got the beat maker If I'm a player it's like you take deck And if you miss the gig then take a rain check Stacks of wax piled high to the ceiling Need a U-Haul truck if I would think about stealing But it's not my steed so I commence with the digging No kidding, something that'll keep the beats hitting while I'm getting so much to choose from, bro.